Hey guys, Rob from Georgia here with you, aka VHS82 Apostrophe, with episode 11 of my ongoing Space 1999 series. Uh, still on disc 3, we are getting to that point though, we'll be moving on into disc 4 here shortly. Uh, next episode I think is Voyager's Return, this episode, funny I said that, no pun intended, uh, for those who really know the show, um, this episode is uh i was looking at my sheet for my last review no it's not the children from 1980 it's uh the last sunset um produced uh you know i didn't even write down the release date man that that one just slipped by me um but the last sunset it's uh directed by uh yeah charles Crichton. too many too many hours in the pool with the with the kids my brain is just a little fried. Um, Charles Crichton comes back to direct. Penfold comes back to write. And uh, I've mentioned this book a few times. Um, Space 1999. If you ever want to explore uh, via from uh, a really good writer in Murr. Um, is a reference guide to all the episodes in year one, year two. With a really outstanding introduction at the beginning. And one that introduces the year two as well just an excellent resource uh he makes the point in this particular episode which it's funny sometimes i'll read his thoughts first and then i'll put on the episode and he had me sort of a little bit i don't know a little bit prepped uh or a little bit down uh my expectations were probably i was going to watch an episode that wasn't as good as some of the episodes that i've seen before i don't i enjoyed it um he makes the point in his book and his comment that there are just way too many events going on. There's just too, it feels like there's too much crammed into the story. And I really didn't feel like there was. Um, now, it, it's funny, there's no special guests in this episode, which is probably why. Now, basically, the story is um, our, uh, our uh, heroes from uh, Moonbase Alpha uh, wander into a friendly solar system and uh, are approaching a planet that looks like it could be, uh, you know, holds potential for colonization. And Bergman's pretty happy, Professor Bergman's pretty happy at this. So they sent a few, a uh, couple Eagle Scouts out there to check it out. And they don't even, they're not even able to get into the atmosphere when an object uh, comes flying off the planet's surface. And, uh, and before they can do anything about it, has attached itself to one of the Eagles, Alan Carter's Eagle, I believe. Uh, and so, you know, they're uh, ordered back to Moonbase Alpha to try to figure out what this is. Well, they think it's a missile or something. They're just waiting for it to blow up. They get all the way back to Moonbase Alpha, and this thing has not gone off. So they realize maybe it's not a threat. Maybe this this planet's way of communicating. There's potentially a civilization down there. Uh, I think Bergman uh, code names it Ariel, maybe if I'm right, if I remember right. Um, and so. Before they can figure out what this this thing that had attached itself to the ego, what it is, it starts spewing gas. Now, obviously, your initial reaction is, holy crap, this is designed to poison us all and wipe us out. When, in fact, what it ends up being is oxygen, the, the kind of terraforming um, device that you would come to, you know, expect with, say, aliens or uh prometheus i think it's talked about um in fact you know it's funny you, you know the more i want the more i watch some of these episodes i wonder if the if ridley and company had did not take notice of space 1999 in terms of just you know looking for reference points and things that you could do and or update bring up to speed or whatever um because there's one you know the, this device and then with a slew of others that suddenly miraculously or magically end up on Moonbase Alpha, what it does is it starts to basically create atmosphere. And so for the first time ever, uh, our heroes on Moonbase Alpha can see a sunrise and they can go outside. There's atmosphere. It's habitable. And the thought is maybe this is going to become their Earth. This is like the gift of all gifts from some alien civilization that has not reached out and communicated its intent yet. Uh, Koenig, being the ever uh, cynical one, you know, sign me up. <laughs> he thinks this is all too good to be true, or at least, you know, that's sort of, you know, what kind of comes off of him. And so 
what they'll end up doing is they'll send a, uh, I think, Helena, Alan, Paul, and Sandra out on an, uh, an exploration team to go out and ascertain if colonizing the moon as it will be if there's potential there. Now, problem is when you introduce atmosphere on a planet like the moon, um, a lot of just quirky things start happening. Now, you never really find out if there's ill intent or purpose by the alien civilization or if, or, or if their if intent is genuine, but they can't even forecast the, the negative impact on moon base alpha that this newly created atmosphere will have on them and it ends up being the worst thing ever because this moon is thought that it will go into orbit around this sun but when they realize it won't then the atmosphere basically becomes their you know their tomb because once they get away from the sun then it's going to turn to ice and it's going to crush the moon they're all going to die uh, but when Helen and the team, Helen is in charge, they go out and when they're out, they hit an electrical storm. Now, the mechanics on the Eagles, uh, they're not designed for this, right? And so things start corroding at, you know, a high level of, uh, of you know, accelerated rate. And their Eagle will actually crash and they are temporarily lost. Uh, and then it becomes clear to those on Moon Day's Alpha that the other eagles are susceptible and they're all corroding and breaking down left and right and so the only way is did they come out with some kind of graphite thing but this the really the real crux of the story really becomes a rescue mission to try to find and, and save helena and that team um and so really a lot of the story revolves around that and when you're there of course paul will uh, attempt uh the impossible and try to walk off towards moon base alpha he won't get that far where fatigue sets in and he'll end up passing out but when he comes to he realizes there are mushroom mushroom type vegetation growing and as you know he's hungry starving he just starts eating it well this seems to have the effect of basically energizing him and bringing him back full speed uh, and when he comes back, what he doesn't realize, it has a hallucin, uh, hallucinogenic, genic, hallucin, hallucin, yeah, you get what I'm saying. It's like, it's like eating bad mushrooms, man. He just goes on a terrible trip and, uh, and he, you know, will just go nuts on the party there, Helena and Sandra and Alan. Uh, it's only because in the end, Helena is the one who actually saves them and uh, by blowing up the eagle in order to create enough of a distraction or uh, you know that uh, any passing eagles that are searching will see it, it'll be undeniable, they'll see it and they'll come over and Koenig basically saves them at the last second, thanks most in part to Helena. Uh, and so they'll realize towards the end of the, at the end of the show that there'll finally be a bit of communication with the alien civilization and and Koenig kind of suspected this from the start that all this civilization was doing was basically trying to give them an excuse to keep on going. Uh, they never once wanted them to try to colonize or come down to the surface. They wanted anything to do with them. As they say, too many years of studying human civilization uh, and their, I think their tendency to violence and everything, they just didn't want to take any chance of introducing that element into their society. Um, and so ultimately, in the end, <clears throat> they will retract the newly established atmosphere that they've created, knowing that this is going to be their death knell, and basically wave them on goodbye. And the moon just continues on out of, seemingly out of the universe. Um, you know, so, you know, to Mer's um, minor criticism that there's just too much... Yeah, I mean, there is, but I think that's why throughout the show, there's no communication with the alien civilization and there's no guest stars. Uh, this is just about taking four of the members of Moonbase Alpha and putting them out in, in a situation where you get to spend time with them as they're dealing with, you know, they're going to starve to death. Uh, their food supply have all been uh, in, infected. I can't remember what it was. Something got into it. And basically, they were reduced to rations. And if 
Somebody from Moonbase Alpha wasn't going to get to them soon. They were all basically going to die eventually. Uh, and, you know, and this moon, as it is transforming into something other than what it was, has become a really hostile world. And so it does create for some very interesting, um, fascinating imagery and opportunity to explore um, this moon in a way that you couldn't before because of, you know, just the, um, the application of this technology in order to create this, you know, it's like terraform terraforming or whatever, right? And so I don't think the problem is, I don't think there's too much going on. I think it's just, it is a full episode for sure. It feels full. And I can't think of any parts in there that you could just arbitrarily cut out in order to bring the time down a little bit. I don't know, because I think everything does feel pretty smooth, at least to me personally. Um, I really got a kick out of it. This was, uh, it was interesting to see an episode without any guest appearances and to spend time with, you know, our, you know, part of the core characters that we deal with on a episode, episode basis. Um, and again, uh, you know, Helena's resolve is tested. Koenig's, uh, growing love for her is tested. Uh, his cynicism knows no bounds, and maybe rightfully so. He is the commander, right? I mean, he's the one, he has the lives of all these people in his hands with the decisions that he makes on their behalf. Um, and he, he kind of knows right from the beginning that uh, a lot of this stuff with uh, the codenamed Ariel Planet is all too good to be true, and he's right in the end. And one of the things that actually uh, he realizes, even before Bergman, is because of the sudden introduction of rain, moon base is at the bottom of a crater. And if it rains too much, it's gonna, moon base up is gonna be lost underneath a, basically a newly established lake on the moon. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of interesting things going on here in this episode. Um, it's a fascinating episode. I had a lot of fun with it. Um, and uh, I, I could see why, I could see Murr's criticism. And I could see why he said it. I. I it's just maybe the way he saw it or viewed it. I didn't quite see it quite the same. I think that's probably why they didn't have any guest star or you know guest appearances on here. Um, trying to think. I don't think there's anything else really. Um, uh, next episode is uh, Vo uh, Voyager's Return. Hmm. I wonder if uh, Star Trek The Motion Picture got any ideas from that one. I guess we'll see when we cover this next episode, episode 12, which is my favorite number. So I don't know, maybe it's a bit of foreshadowment that this is going to be an out of this world episode. One can only hope. Uh, Space 1999, man, what do you think so far? Drop a comment down below uh, if you like and uh, hit the like button. And if you haven't subbed, subbed, appreciate it. And we're just gonna continue to Ramble along, man. It's Led Zeppelin say, Ram, just ramble along, man. Right to the very end of all ends. Yeah, anyways, too long out in the sun today. We always end these things off with Go Bills. <laughs>